restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, we bless you and thank you now for this time of sharing, this time of allowing us to be comforted of you in this service. We ask your blessing upon the Teal family and friends and others who have a concern. And we ask now that you would bless this day and make it a blessing and bring to us the comfort that only Jesus Christ can give. For we ask it in his wonderful saving name.
go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. May God add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. God bless the Till family, Paul, Tiffany, Miss Susan, love you. God bless you.
Russians, as a nephew, Mr. Freddie White, and Mr. Bill Law, as a teacher, Mr. Carl Burnside. Following that, we'll have a solo by Tiffany Tim. In Romans 12, chapter 6 and 7 verses, it states, We have different gifts 
according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesizing, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Mr. Lemon Till truly possessed the gift of teaching and impacted thousands of students. He was a superb teacher with a brilliant math mind, but his impact exceeded well beyond teaching the content and curriculum of math. There are pivotal moments in one's life that you can't anticipate. My name is Carl Burnside, and approximately 45 years ago, I had what became a life-defining moment. I was assigned as the only black student in Mr. Till's eighth grade Algebra I class at Fort Myers Middle School. Little did I know that assignment would lay the groundwork for my professional life. I knew Mr. Till prior to him being my eighth grade algebra teacher, but when I entered his classroom, it was truly life changing. Not only did he enjoy teaching math, he made his students enjoy learning math. And that is not always easy to do. He was the most charismatic and passionate math teacher that I had ever had. And after 35 years as a teacher, and educator and administrator, he still is the most charismatic math teacher I've ever seen. When he would call on students in class, he would make you feel like a superstar. He would say, Carl Burnside, give me something good. When I would share a correct solution, he would give me one of his original Mr. Till classic responses, such as, now you're picking with Crisco. He has such a passion about teaching math, and when he would explain to us, Till is for real, all of us students knew that he was truly preparing us for the real world of mathematics. He was the ultimate encourager, as he had a determination that all of his students would excel. When he would call your whole name in class, it was like a proclamation and made you just stand up and be ready. Esteemed writer William Arthur Ward provided the following inspirational quotation. The mediocre teacher tells. The good teacher explains. The superior teacher demonstrates. However, the great teacher inspires. Mr. Till, inspired me. It was in that eighth grade classroom that I was initially inspired to become a math teacher due to the dynamic Mr. Lemuel Till. Now, he didn't make me good at math. I was always good at math. From the time my grandmother in first grade gave me the, the, the bank cards that had the timetables. And she said, teach yourself these and you'll be good at math. So in first grade, I learned my timetables. And that's when I discovered I was good at math. However, what Mr. Till did, he truly inspired me to love math, but more importantly, to want to pass that love to others. Mr. Till was a role model. He was, as I said before, inspiration. I can vividly recall sitting in class one morning after the first couple months and said, that's what I want to do. As I watched him just energy, energetically go around the classroom, I want to be like Mr. Till and teach math. Now, for all of his accomplishments, he was even happier. And those of you who cheat know this, he was happy about the achievements of others. He would tell me how proud he was of me as I achieved various awards myself, including the Golden Apple Teacher Award, the State of Florida Presidential Math Teacher of the Year Award, coaching my high school math team to state and national championships, and eventually becoming a school principal. However, make no mistake about it, Mr. Till was the master teacher because I was trying to emulate his energy and charisma as a teacher. Mr. Till finally won the Golden Apple Award, which was long overdue. When he won, I was reminded of the scripture, 
Luke 6, 20. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. When I was asked about Mr. Till being a Golden Apple teacher, my response is that Mr. Till is just not a Golden Apple teacher. He is an inspiration for others to become Golden Apple teachers. I was always well aware of how proud he was of me, as he would remind me constantly of his pride, congratulating me and encouraging me all through the, all the years. Mrs. Till shared me recently when one of his last hospital stays that he found out that a nurse who was uh, working with him knew me. And he proudly said, oh, I was called Burnside's math teacher. <laughs> and I was even blessed to have had Mrs. Till, who probably goes by her way, where when I became a principal, she was a teacher at the school, and she actually was instrumental by me to support and guidance so that I could become a successful principal. So Mr. Till, while a quiet outsider, most of you said he was a background person. However, in that classroom, it was his domain. It was his world. Yes, as an adult, Mr. Till was my fraternity brother, as well as thankfully my Christian brother. However, he will also always, always be my Algebra One teacher who inspired me to become a math teacher. Harry Adams stated, a teacher affects eternity he can never tell where his influence stops. As an educator, I hope that I can just have a small influence on the lives of students as Mr. Till had on me and as he continues to be an influence in my life. Consequently, in my life, I hope to continue Mr. Till's legacy. Mr. Till, may you rest in heavenly peace, although I'm sure that you will still spread your enthusiasm and love for teaching math. God bless you.
deacon and church member, Deacon Hugo Tony, as a cap brother, Omar Omid Hunter, and as a friend, Marcus Gustin. As a deacon also, and he ought to sort of, me and him sort of work together here at the church, in the choir, and on the deacon board. He was very, very quiet. He never said too much in the different meetings, but don't get him back in, the, in the classroom. He is the one that carried over me. I used to go and after he got where he couldn't see that well, I used to go by and pick him up and take him home after a choir rehearsal. And me and him would talk. He, you have to pull it out of him. He don't talk too much. So, uh, Mr. Till was a good man. In my eyes. And I know we're going to miss him. But God know what he's doing. Yeah. To the family, keep on believing in. Sometimes wonder what people will say about me after I am gone. I wonder if they will be kind things and whether they will be true. We have all, I think, been to an occasion where a speaker says something about someone, and as nice as it sounds, we know that the speaker wasn't telling the truth. <laughs> Right? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Brother. 
Brother Teal was the kind of brother that we get to tell the truth about. Because, and it sounds good, because he was good. A fall 1959 initiate of the Allen University chapter, the Beta Rule of Cap Off His Side. Brother Teal began his lifetime of achievement by doing something rare for black men. Graduated from college. But his education did not end there. He, it had been his dream to go to Indiana University, the university where Cap Off His Side was founded in 1911 to earn his master's degree in math, and he did. A black man with a master's degree in math was another area. Brother Teal achieved more milestones in his life, getting married, starting a family, starting his career as an educator. He was, as you know, he was a math teacher for many years. He won the COVID, COVID, Golden Apple Award, which is another rare occasion, unfortunately, still today for a black man. In 1978, Brother Teal achieved yet another milestone. He was one of the members of Cap Alpha Psi who petitioned for the charter of the Fort Myers, Florida alumni chapter of Cap Alpha Psi. While our fundamental purpose has always been achievement, we have always trained for leadership as well. When a group of leaders select you to be their leader, it is an awesome, awesome honor to be bestowed on any member of our fraternity. Brother Teal, Brother Polmark, served in several positions with our chapter, including being chief chosen for the position of the chapter. An eloquent speaker, Brother Teal, was repeatedly chosen to deliver the statement of occasion at our rededication banquets. However, he is most known to all of us for his love of Cap Alpha Psi. I'm sorry, I can't talk. You guys, please excuse me. He, he was most known to all of us for his love of Cap Alpha Psi and his love for his brothers. In Kappa, we hold a national conference every two years, somewhere in the country. Brother Teal went to every one of them as well as many of our regional conferences until he was no longer able to attend. He was immensely proud to be a Kappa. And notwithstanding his own achievements, nobody was more excited than Brother Teal when the chapter accomplished a milestone or when individual brothers accomplished milestones. Brother Teal, Brother Teal had a knack for reaching out to people and was able to see the potential in us that sometimes we were not, were not able to see in ourselves. I suspect that this is a refrain that you will hear throughout this celebration. I think you've already heard it. There was a quiet, resolute assurance that would come from Brother Teal to encourage you to move beyond your own limits. For me, it came circa 2006. I had been living in Fort Myers since 99, and I had not been active with my fraternity or with the local chapter. I was at a bar association meeting banquet when brothers of the Fort Myers alumni chapter came out to welcome the National Bar Association president, who at the time was a captain. I met Brother Teal while standing at the buffet table. I was standing there to dish up my meal, and emulating a fraternity, a fraternity tradition of deference to older members, I grabbed a plate for Brother Teal, and I started dishing up his plate. During that short time, I had an opportunity to talk with Brother Teal, and, and he asked why I had not been active. He reminded me of the obligation that I made to cap off the side when I was initiated. And he quietly but assuredly asked me to come back to Cap. So I did. His next prognostication came to me in 2011. When he approached me after a meeting and said, You're going to be pole Mark. At the time, I smiled to Brother Teal and I told him 
that I appreciated his vote of confidence, I just wanted to be a good brother to the chapter. Nevertheless, I kept hearing from Brother Gio, and I think the brothers in the chapter heard from him too. Needless to say, the brothers elected me poem mark in 2019. I have heard and read similar accounts from brothers in our chapter. Just ask Brother White, Brother Burnside, we've gotten to hear from him, Brother Daly, Brother Atkins, just to name a few. Brother Frederick White could not be here with us today, but he told me that Brother Teal was his hero. In closing, Brother Teal, we rejoice in your ultimate achievement of having reached that golden shore. And we hope to one day join you there. We will continue to celebrate you and your achievements and your commitment to our bond. We love you and we will miss you. God bless you. Esteemed brothers, Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Corporate. I bring greetings and condolences from Manderson C. Wilder, one of my best friends in the world. He pledged the same time I pledged the Maple. Spring 1982, Alpha Chapter Chapter, North Carolina Central University. I met Mr. Teal in the summer. 2002. He was instrumental in leading the repositioning of public housing in this community. He served as chairman of the board during some of the most challenging days of our tenure together. His contributions to the success of the Housing Authority are many. His impact on me as an ED is immeasurable. Mr. Till, Mr. Till and I must have ate breakfast together a hundred times, you know that. Those were some of the best times I had with Mr. Till. He was a funny guy. And I remember we would be having breakfast and always former students, Brother Burnside, would show up and Mr. Till, Mr. Till, and, and some he remembered and some he did not. And me, being from North Carolina, I didn't know uh, many of the students who would come by and speak to him. but. He would take time to speak with them, and I would always be finished with my breakfast, and he would just be started. <laughs> and I would sit and wait, and we would talk, and we would reflect on a lot of things, and, and, and I'll share a story with you. I, I began to notice that Mr. Teal would always wait for me to order first, and then he said, I, I'm going to have what he said. So one morning, I ordered typically pancakes, cakes, bacon. Mr. T, I'll, I'll have what he's having. And the lady was about to walk away. I said, hold on. I changed my mind. <laughs> and I ordered something different. And Mr. T looked at me and he looked at her and said, I changed my mind too. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had the best times having breakfast and just chatting about things. 
You know, since the cell phone era, there's only been two times I can remember receiving a phone call when I knew exactly what that phone call was about. In June of, two, of June 29th of 2019, I was in a hotel in Orlando at Disney, the happiest place on earth. headed to see my mother. My phone rang. I looked down, it was Pastor B. I said, Why is he calling me on a Saturday morning? I knew where he was calling me. So you see, only two times in my life that I know what that call was about. I was not able to attend my uncle's home door. He was always interested in uh, what's going on in my life. He was extraordinarily proud of my achievements. The life of the family and the children and their achievements gave him great results, and he was happy. I do not know where to begin to tell you about this void and uh, hope that Uncle Lim passing has left in my life. I wish that I had more time with him, I really do. But I will treasure the years that I had with him in my heart for the rest of my life. See, Uncle Lim was an old-fashioned black man who struggled through some hard times but knew the importance of a good education. My uncle said his first job exposed him to people who saw the world differently than him. And the more he learned about how they held their beliefs, the more he understood why getting an education was so important. 
See, they say you never know what you got until it's gone. But I really did think that I didn't know. And I had a wonderful uncle. Until this happened, and I felt the war of the loss. My uncle Lim and my father raised a very rich family, whereas we could not be divided because we were rich and loved with one another. So my uncle was my father's younger brother. He was a good father a good husband, a good provider, and an excellent uncle. The last clear exchange between my uncle and I was the last week before passing away. I would call him frequently to check and see how he was doing. And I did in a conversation, I told him that I love you, Uncle Titan. And he said it with a very soft mumble in his voice, I love you. I will always remember him saying he loved me because that was important to me. The most rewarding thing of the limb life in his life was my Uh He told me on several occasions how he met her. She was sitting in the back of a car and he said that she was the most beautiful person he had ever saw. And he said, I knew she would be my wife. And there was another thing my Uncle Lim cherished so much is two children, Tiffany and Pop. He shared so many deep memories of them that was powerful and moving to me. I would think of you all, and I would miss you. And when I say think of you, I mean every day. When I say miss you, I mean always. I never thought that this day would come. But even though your soul has departed from the earth, you will always, always remain in my heart. I love you, Uncle Titan.
His memory will ever live in the hearts and minds of those who knew him. Sorrowfully submitted, December 29, 2020, Mount Olive African Methodist Episcopal Church for Myers, Florida, Reverend James C. Gibbons, Pastor, Wallace Washington, Stewart Pro Tem. National Pan Hellenic Council of Southwest Florida, resolution in devoted and loving memory of Brother Lemuel Till Sr. Our lives are fine weavings that God and we prepare. Each life becomes a fabric planned and fashioned in his care. We may not always see just how the weavings intertwine, but we must trust the master's hand and follow his design. For he can view the pattern from upon the upper side, while we must look from underneath and trust in him to guide. Sometimes a strand of sorrow is added to his plan, and though it's difficult for us, we still must understand. That's it, he who fills the shuttle it is he who knows what's best. So we must weave in patience and leave to him the rest. There is now a hush in our hearts as we come together to honor and pay tribute to the memory of one whose full life was departed from this side of the living and has joined that innumerable heavenly caravan. The members of the National Panhellenic Council of Southwest Florida give thanks to the life of our dear Greek family member. We thank God for the ethical, honorable, and positive influences he made upon our lives and the lives of everyone he encountered. We want you to know that our thoughts and prayers are with you as we bid a fond farewell to a man of honor and valor. Whereas Brother Lemuel Till Sr. was a founding, dedicated, and loyal member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, Inc. of the Fort Myers Alumni Chapter. And whereas not only is this a loss of a devoted husband, father, and relative, but also the loss of a friend of the community. Whereas the passing out of our beloved Greek family member is the will of God, and whereas there is a human tie that has been broken, which leaves us with a feeling of loss and pain. Yet we are encouraged and consoled by the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore be it resolved that we embrace the family because of the common bond that connects us and that we continue the legacy that Brother Lemuel Till Sr. established while here on this earth. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented to the family of Brother Lemuel Till Sr. Humbly submit it, and a copy placed in the records and archives of the National Panhellenic Council of Southwest Florida. Mr. Forrest Walker, Jr., President, Dr. Amelia Bell Hawkins, Secretary. Acknowledgement for the staff. God is a father loved by all. His soul is now at rest. He'll sleep in peace. <laughs> His work is done, for a father's work is the best. He will know the joy of perfect rest in heaven up above, where he will dwell contently, protected by God's love. Your hearts may grieve that he must lie beneath the sacred sod but yet you know, he will sleep in peace forever with the Lord. 
we the staff and members of the James C. Boyd Funeral Home, on behalf of the Teal family, would like to take this time to thank you, you and you, those that are home watching via YouTube, uh, via our, amen, our, our website, those that could not be here due to this pandemic, we would like to say thank you for sharing with this family when they needed you the most. At this time, your cards and all these beautiful floor arrangements will not be acknowledged. But at a more opportune time, the family will thank you in a more personal manner. May God bless you and keep you in their prayer. Amen. We'll have a selection. Friendship Corner. Follow Matt Solo. My sister Marjorie Ford. Mr. Toombs involved in several ministries in this church. Um, when you come to friendship, we uh, try to get involved in a lot. And, uh, we don't just sit and watch each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Till was one of my favorite people. And you're right, Mr. Burnside. He would always say you're cooking with Crisco. So I owe this to him today that we got to cook a little bit.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm just honored to be here, being a part of my uncle's home going. Um, a lot of people see me. Mr. Till is the brother of my mother. Amen. And I thank God for him. He used to call me Marjorie Joe. <laughs> Amen. Every time he came to the house to check on my mother. Amen. He was like, Luke, you okay? And I'm just grateful for my uncle and my auntie Susie. She is, oh my God, she is amazing. She is so sweet. We thank God for her kids. But I'm just glad to be a part of this one. Um, Till always used to come up to me and say, Marty, if I go before you, I want you to sing at my service. And I say, Till, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. But I think I'm able to do it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Just give him praise. <laughs> Blessing That's right. assurance. Yes. Oh. 
this past week I received a call from one of our members and I said to them, I'm not doing well today. And this person said to me, he said, you know, people are of the opinion that preachers aren't human. We are as human as you are. I didn't come here from the moon. I came out of a congregation just like you. And I thank God that he was gracious enough to call me to this ministry. Mr. T was an unusual person. I never sat in one of his classes math classes. I probably would have been a disaster anyway. <laughs> but he was a fine man. I remember arriving here in 1974. And Mr. T was one of the first persons that I met. And I'm going to say this and I don't intend to offend you. Most men don't like preachers. But Mr. Till was quite different, he and Jimmy Gilmore. I never should forget when they started this local chapter of your fraternity. I was standing there on the porch and they told me of their plan. And of course, they always received encouragement from me, but I always received encouragement from these two young men that I didn't know until I arrived here in Fort Myers. And uh, I remember also the story of Sister Teal that uh, it told about you and Brother Teal getting together. And we often laughed about that. But Mr. Teal was a person of great encouragement. And um, when I asked him to become a deacon, he didn't feel then that he was qualified to do so. And just as he's convinced some of you of the importance of education and the importance of being who you are. He also encouraged me to continue what I do well. And um, I recently visited the home before he um, transpired. And he was trying to say something to me and Tiffany was asking him to not talk to me because he wanted him to save his strength. But I kind of knew what he was saying. Marcus, on one of those occasions, you all went somewhere in North Carolina. And uh, he came home. And he said to me, Pastor, he said, we're not helping you. He said, we can, we're uh, contradicting you and we are uh, wondering about some of the things that you do. He said, but uh, there are some things that we need to do to help you to be better than what you are. And I think on the day that I visited the home, Tiffany, when he wanted to talk to me, he wanted to re-emphasize what he had said to me so many years before. You told him that uh, daddy, 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 but I knew what he wanted to say. But he wanted to tell me yet again that um, we should have been more of an encouragement to you than we actually were. But he was that kind of person. He and Jimmy Gilmore would encourage me when others would try to undermine me. And I have always appreciated not only Lemuel Teal, but I've also appreciated uh, his the home going of uh, Jimmy Gilmore. The other thing that I say to you, I was born the same year as Mr. Teal. I'm six months older than Mr. Teal. He was born in 1938, and I was born in 1938. 
Fortunately or unfortunately, I'm still around. Now, under normal circumstances, this building would be overflowing with people. And I don't want anybody to think that um, we're neglecting our responsibility to Mr. Teal by not being present. We've got people who don't know anything about church telling us what to do. <laughs> Amen. And uh, at a future date, I think it's in the plan for us to have a community memorial service in honor of Mr. Teal. I'm just so happy that before his demise, we had a celebration here with the brothers involved for Mr. Teal and Mr. Middlebrook. These are two men that I have high respect for. And I thought if we did it for one, we should do it for the other. Um, I want to talk about something today that uh, hopefully you will buy into. Um, I'm going to read uh, from this iPhone <laughs> a um, translation from the New Living Translation. Rather than come here with an armful of Bibles, I just thought I'd read from this. Um, whatever. Okay, this, they use this technology. But I'd like to call our attention to Romans chapter. Eight, beginning with verse 18 and concluding with verse 24. It reads, Yet whatever we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believe it will groan even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our, our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us all our full rights as his adopted children including the new bodies he has promised to us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't have enough hope for it. I want to talk about Mr. Teal and speak to us around the subject, a man of Christian hope. I'm going to say that again. A man of Christian hope. The word of comfort today is about hope. Even in the present moral, economic, and medical distress, I too am a man of hope. Not for human reasons, nor from any 
natural optimism, but because I believe that the Holy Spirit is at work in the world even when his name remains unheard. To hope is a duty, not a luxury. To hope is not a dream, but to turn dreams into reality. I hope you're going to pray with me today. Happy are those who dare to dream and are ready to pay the price to make their dream come true. Now, you're not going to appreciate this comment, but if you grew up in Fort Myers, you had to be a person of hope. <laughs> I've been here a while, and when I first arrived, for two years, hardly anybody in the Christian community really spoke to me with any kind of affection. With the exception of Lemuel Teal and Jimmy Gilmore. Hope is one of the words which takes its meaning from the Bible and Christianity. Christians see the world as it really is, physically decaying and spiritually infected with sin. But Christians do not need to be pessimistic because we have hope for future so, can I get an amen? The Apostle Paul says in the scripture passage before us, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. We sometimes say, as long as there is life, there is hope. These words have meaning we do not always think of when we use them. The true meaning of these words is that life and hope are inseparable. All right. All right. Any person who does not have hope well. is already dead. Come on, For you see, hope is the last thing that dies in a man. All right. All right. I will tell the congregation this, that when I die, you take me out to the cemetery and you let me down into a grave and you say the last rites. Don't you write a period. You write a comma. Because there's always something else after that. As long as we have possessions of our normal faculties, we are hopeful. Most miserable is the person or the persons who live with little hope. Yes, For you see, as a rule, even in the deepest gloom, uh -huh. we cling to the thought that somehow or other, uh -huh. things will get better. <laughs> to all the nights of dark despair, we are not determined to live without hope. For with hope, we have springs eternal in the human breath. Now I want to make two points and I'll take my seat. First of all, hope liberates. 
I'm going to say that again. Hope liberates. There is a phrase in the prophecy of Hosea which says, I will give the valley of Acre for a door of hope. You'll find these words in Hosea chapter 2, verse 15. The valley of Acre was the place where Aten took part of the spoil after the destruction of Jericho and hid it in the ground. So he and his property were destroyed and buried in the valley. The very place which was the scene of Israel's defeat and Achan's sin and shame was the place which God gave to his people as a door of hope. So you see, hope liberates. It is a door. Hope is a way in. And hope is also a way out. But hope is not only that which liberates. Hope is an anger. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the wall. But hope is not just a liberator. Hope is an anchor. And it is an anchor only if it is Christian hope. And what is Christian hope? Well, I'll tell you. It is the attitude of a man who has gazed upon the face of God. It is the attitude of Abraham on Mount Moriah in his moment of despair and dilemma. When his son Isaac said, Father, where is the fire? And where is the, where is the wood? His response was, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. It is the habit, attitude of Jacob and the hand wrestling with the angel of the Lord, saying to the angel of the Lord, I will not let you go unless you bless me.
Thank you. 